Hello, this is a moving mark. We're going to start a new series. It's going to be called Route 66 Spotlight. And today's feature, first episode is going to be featuring the infamous Roman Rich. And I'm going to turn it over to him, let him talk to you a little bit about what Route 66 means to him and what makes him a spotlight. Welcome to the Roman. Hey, thanks for having me, Mark. You're very, very welcome. <laughs> So, my name is Roman Rich, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I've been exploring old roads, pathways, mostly Route 66, uh, since the early 2000s. Um, and uh, I think Route 66 is pretty awesome overall. What questions did you have for me? Um, basically, what makes you a spotlight or a hero or a preservationist for Route 66? What are some of your accomplishments? I've done some fairly notable things. I, I kind of first started out going from Chicago all the way to Los Angeles and along the way I painted Route 66 shields on the road. I didn't paint them all, but I painted them a lot. And I got inspired to do that from some of the signs I'd seen painted on the road uh, out near Galena, Kansas, back when I first started exploring. And to me, that kind of rolled out like a welcome mat, and I thought, man, that's really cool uh, to see a Route 66 shield painted on the road. And it just really welcomed me to that section of the road because, you know, that was during a time where we didn't have GPS and guidance and things like that. I didn't even know at the time that, that books existed or guides existed for that purpose. Um, so I did that. Uh, along the way, I, I also did a lot of documentary stuff. We, my original purpose of exploring 66 was finding all the orphaned and old alignments of 66, finding all the little nuggets that uh, were out there somewhere that weren't quite known. Um, but through a number of events, I, I later was uh, inspired to explore the other spectrum of Route 66, which is the people and the places, uh, which kind of brings the whole marriage of Route 66 together. It's about the road, the people and the places. Um, so I've spent a lot of years tirelessly promoting 66 and people on Route 66 and inspiring other people like yourself to promote Route 66. Well, from my understanding, you had a best friend on Route 66. Who was that best friend? Uh, the best friend I had on Route 66, which I've considered me the best friend of Route 66, was the late Gary Turner from Paris Springs Junction, Missouri. Uh, he recreated the gas station there in Paris Springs. And people from all over the world come to see that gas station, this old Sinclair station. And he, he modeled it after uh, uh, Fred and Gay Burrito. And, and that's why it's called uh, Gay Burrito. Uh, and there's a whole story that goes beyond that where basically, uh, I think Burrito. Um, I might be getting my information confused here. Men equal. Gary used to tell the story all the time. But more about Gary, uh, he was really the ambassador of Route 66. He trained people to understand how precious Route 66 is, and, and that's a trip of a lifetime. And if you, you stay involved, it's a dream of a lifetime. People are constantly going down, finding themselves, uh, searching for their own identity, and, and they're finding it on Route 66. And some people stay forever like myself. Uh, some people start businesses. Some people just go and tell other people about it. Uh, but yeah, Gary was very instrumental in shaping me and many, many other roadies along Route 66 uh, into who we are today. Just this machine of promotion and irrational passion for Route 66. Well, I know you and you is your best friend. You know, we just about Route 66. So you say, you know, I'll share with you and share my best friend on Route 66 and also his best friend in general. And I, I thank you and I commend you for your efforts on preservation of Route 66, the things that you've done, the things that you continue to do, stepping into this new role of Block President of the Missouri Route 66 Association. You're doing a fantastic job with that. You're bringing in new life to the association, bringing in the potential of bringing on younger people, which I think is going to be key. And I can hand around here my phone and see that you have your children that you bring on Route 66 on a regular occasion. 
And if you had some advice to give a newbie that may see this on YouTube, and as far as someone is interested in the Rouse Central City, what would be your recommendation as far as some major resources out there, some things that they can use to better their trip and make their trip more enjoyable and more fruitful? Um, probably the number one thing to have while starting out your your interest in Route 66 would be to have an open mind. Uh, that's number one. Have an open mind when it comes to how you interpret information, how you perceive different cultures and societies, because there's a whole bunch of different cultures along Route 66, but um, mechanically speaking, uh, go buy yourself a good guidebook. You can arm yourself with uh, a navigation aid on GPS, like on your iPhone, or Android phone too, they, they have several out there, but, but the guidebooks, um, I don't know, it's just something nice about having something tangible in your hand that you can read, that can't be distracted by a text message or an email, a phone call, you can't interrupt a book. Is there any particular one that you would recommend? You know, this is what Gary would sell you to do. Gary would say, get Jerry McClanahan's Easy Guide. Jerry's got several updates to that Easy Guide. It's probably the best one in my opinion because you know, it's spiral bound. You can flip it over. It doesn't want to close on you. And, and Jerry has been tirelessly studying and researching the 66 since the early 80s. He is probably one of the authorities on the 66. So, yeah, get yourself a good book. And uh, set aside as much time as you can because that's another instrument in being successful in Joy Route 66 is having time to do it. And if you can't a lot, three weeks to do it or two weeks to do it, just take a little section. Just take and go after Illinois or Missouri or, or California or any of those states. Just go after you know three or four hundred miles to begin with. And take your time and meet those people. And, don't get in a hurry. This is not the interstate. That's number one. Don't don't get in a hurry. This is not the interstate. This is a different experience, and you just have to let it happen. From my understanding, that you got some preservation projects in the Missouri Route 66 Association involved with, and I also understand, and I've been a part of this also, that you're involved in. It. Uh, Preservation Project in Arizona. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. We we started a co-op for Arizona. It's called the Route 66 Co-op, and we rescued this old abandoned trading post that had not been used since the 60s, probably the early 60s. And uh, for many of us hardcore explorers, this was like the crown jewel of Route 66. It just sat out there all by itself. You can barely see it. It's like a little domino. It, it's off in the hills from the interstate. It's like a little bitty sugar cube kind of out there. And we just were compelled to go save that. And, you know, through, I don't know, divine intervention or what, but it became available for sale. We bought it, and with the help of Mark and many, many other rubies out there, uh, some people were able to send us money, other people just showed up in person, but through a lot of volunteer effort and a lot of just goodwill, we got that old trading post saved and prevented it from falling down on the ground. And we're still working on it now, but it's in a state now that we're very secure in how it is. We feel very good about it, very positive. Man, that that would be such a huge accomplishment to just restore this old trading post out in the middle of nowhere, Arizona. When it comes to Missouri, we've got several. We're trying to save some bridges, several buildings along the route. John's Modern Cabins is, is one of those that we're targeting. Um, there's actually a motor port here in Carthage that we're looking at, uh, trying to get it saved. There's one in Sullivan, Missouri. There's, there's a lot of interest, there's a lot of activity in the Route 66. And uh, we're just trying to bring more attention to that, bring it to life for the public to see. Well, fantastic, Bruce. You, you shared a lot of good information with us today. Uh, this will be shared on YouTube within a short period of time. And how can someone find the coordinates? I want more of that.
connect with you personally as far as your YouTube and uh, social media accounts? Well, I'm always available through Smoke Signal or Tin Can in a String. No. Uh, best way to find me is Roman Rich. There's R O A M I N, no G, Rich. Uh, or you can find my website, Hooked on Route66.com. If you type that in in Google, Hooked on Route66, you're guaranteed to find me. Any final parting words that you'd like to share with anyone before we uh, call it today? Always go your own way. Do what you want to do as long as you're not trespassing on others. And, uh, life's short. Uh, time is the most finite substance that any human being here has. We don't know how much of it that we actually have. And for me, life is about making memories and extending those memories to others. So, uh, have a great trip. Thanks so much for your time and most of all your efforts and your friendship. Thank, Thank you, you Martin. So much, I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Good job, man. Thank you, sir. That's going to work out.